and old soul giving us old soul. An innate passion for music and its embodiment of love, tonight's guest will give us the celestial love in his music. He'll take us on a journey of mutual adoration and self-affirmation. A Grammy-winning session and touring musician, Sharif and Burgundy's resume is teeming with names of today's most acclaimed musicians like Alicia Keys, Kanye West, and John Legend, to name a few. This month, he'll be recording his sophomore solo album, and he's here tonight to give us a peek into what it has to offer. I'm your host, Kenyatta Beasley, and don't move, because Sharif is here to embrace your soul right here on B-Side. Don't leave me now. I need you more than I ever did before. And Lord, please don't leave me now. I need you more than I ever did before. So I pledge my love, my love, my love to you. And Lord, where would I be without your love? And all of your grace and your mercy and forgiving me chance after chance and again I am not worthy of such love and forgiveness so I pledge my love. my love to you all right yeah man thank you sharif and burgundy welcome yeah. to b-side man great to have you here thank you well thanks for having me yeah um man i was reading i was on your website and I got the impression that with, with the term neo soul that's actually permeating through, <laughs> you know, music, that uh, you're basically a person that we should just strike that neo from and just say, man, this is just the 21st century, the soul <laughs> man. And, I can, and, and from the first song, I think the, the audience got that. So, you know, so welcome. So um, tell us about, um, you, you're, you just played South by Southwest. I did. I was out in South by Southwest. Um, my good friend Andre Simone, who played with Prince, childhood friend with Prince, mm -hmm. I recorded on his. He just put a new record out called 1969 that you all should go get. Mm -hmm. But I played on his record before this one called The Stone. And um, he called me up and he's like, Hey, you're going to be in South by Southwest? I was like, Well, I could. <laughs> <laughs> So he asked me to come out and do some songs with him, and um, you know, and I also played on the Prince tribute set with Des Dickerson, Mickey Free, Wyclef Jean was there, um, and a f other few other Minneapolis-based musicians, and it was incredible. Yeah. Too. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, um, you're, you're basically, a, um, man, an awesome singer-songwriter, but you've also worked with a lot of, uh, like, artists such as, like, John Legend, Alicia Keys, and I know you spent the, the past few years doing that. Um, any of those experiences, how have they helped shape you and what, what you're doing now? Oh, uh, everything is a learning experience. Um, and s in fact, I only got into, I've always had my own band, in front of my own band. Mm -hmm. And I really only started doing the support artist thing so I could get some sort of behind the scenes knowledge right. of uh, you know what it's like to be in the band, what it's like to go on tour, mm -hmm. to you know have a band doing constant rehearsals and all of that stuff. And then of course, you know, when you start making that money, you get a little roped into it. Right. So. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of addictive, and then you find yourself you know being the support rather than you know, investing exactly. in yourself. Exactly. But now you're 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 here, and you're about to uh, release your sophomore. They be reckoning. We're going to be hearing like a lot of songs from that tonight. Yes, the first song that I just did is titled "The Prayer," and that's going to be. Um, I usually open a lot of my shows with that song. I think it's going to be the first song on the record as well. Cool, yeah. cool. And before this, your uh, your previous record was uh, there's like a, a, a gap. So in 2006. Um, yeah, let's let's call it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bubby's Love was my uh, freshman debut record. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to come out on a, a label, and it, that label ended up falling through. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was determined to put it out, so I just took the songs and released it on my own. Um, and right at that same time was when I started touring with John. So we really didn't have. Uh, uh, we really didn't put a whole lot of money behind it. I was a one-man operation. I didn't have management. I didn't have a label. So I was just uh, put it out there on the strength of, okay, well, all these people see me on the road, and I'll just hype it and see what we can do. Right. Can, can you, um, the, the first song that you played, what, what was the, uh, the meaning and inspiration behind it? Because, I mean, doing, doing our interview tonight, I want to kind of get into your thought process of, like, how your, your songwriting, how, how you came up with some of these songs. Well, the title is The Prayer, and it's, it's just that, you know. I was raised in the Baptist church, so faith is the base of pretty much everything that I do. Uh, and it's just a prayer to God, letting him know how much I love him and thanking him for keeping me all this way mm. uh, through the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs, and the things we shouldn't be doing, and, and all of that. Mm. I think a lot of that is missing in today's society in general. Yeah. and and. Not that you have to be, um, um, you know, holy roller toting the Bible everywhere, but just that sense of morality and having a, a basis of something good in your life. You know, if you look around, I, I think so many people are hurting, mm -hmm. and it manifests in in day to day interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, just speaking with people over the phone. They don't want to do their jobs. They're they're miserable in everything they do, and they project that energy. So. I think if we get back to the basics a little bit and just think about what's good in our lives instead of what's bad, mm. uh, you know, we'll all live a little better, bit better lives. Right. The um, the next two songs that you're going to pl um, play for us, uh, can you g tell us what they what they're going to be? Um, the next song is from Bubby's Love, my first record. It's called um, Miracle, and I actually wrote this song. It's it's a love song, but it's a love song to my daughter. It's, it, a lot of people think it's about an intimate relationship or, or um, you know, a, a man and woman relationship, but it's it's about my daughter. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. And then the song after that will more than likely be um, another breakup song. I always tease with my manager Terrence that I have a PhD in breakups. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I mean, it's a, it's an easy way to get good material. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Ask Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I'll probably do that one next. But this first one is called Miracle. Once, once again, Sharif and Burgundy.
want to clean the slate, warm and safe face. Want you to know me before it's too late. I need a miracle to bring you back. Really need a miracle to make you familiar to something we never really had. Hey, something we never really had. Said I'm sorry, I can say it all and over till I'm blue in the face. Gave it up to the Lord and relied on his mercy and his grace. A miracle to bring him back. I really need a miracle. Make you familiar to something we never really had. Something we never really had. Let me tell you one thing about life is for certain when they will all be gone. That's why I have to write the wrong while singing this song. A miracle to bring him back. I really need a miracle to make you familiar to something we never really had. Hey, something we never really had. Imagine the rest of the band here. I need a miracle. Come on back. I need a miracle. Come on back. I need a miracle to get you on back. Miracle, come on back. A miracle to come on back. A miracle, come on back. A miracle, come on back. Thank you. song so stop the tape we're going straight to the end somebody's right and somebody's always wrong our time was out we didn't scream or shout we'll chalk another one up and get back on the scout and this one sure didn't take long but I won't write another breakup song I won't write another breakup song. No, I won't. I won't cry. Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. And it's all old news. So what's the use? I'm mad as hell and let's all get drunk tonight. It's another day. Time never waits Don't ask me why It's just another goodbye And this one sure didn't take long But I won't write another breakup song I won't write another breakup song
just another day. Time never waits. Yeah, I'll take all the blame again. Somebody get me a Jameson. And it won't take me long to write another breakup song. To write another breakup song. Write another breakup song. Oh. Write another breakup song. <laughs> That's actually an old song, but I never released it, so it might go on the next project. That should go on the next project. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, about your, your your musical journey. So, you're originally from uh, Jersey? New, Bo New Brunswick. Born in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Yeah. And I'm actually living back there now to move back home to help out with some family matters. Mm -hmm. um, but I was here in Brooklyn for 23 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how long have you been um, singing and playing? Is this like a lifelong thing? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing all my life. Um, started playing drums actually and piano and keyboard in church mm -hmm. when I was really young and switched over to guitar. I've always played a little guitar but I started taking it more seriously when I got into college mm -hmm. and started playing in bands um, around Winter Rutgers, so around my town, right. playing in various bands, playing bass in a few bands and guitar and stuff. Right. So you um, at what point did you start singing, man? Because you, you really, you, I mean, the way you sing, you really capture that that old that old soul kind of like influence. So what what, what what at what point did this like take over your uh, your performance? Well, I grew up singing in the church choir. Yeah. Um, but I when I finally started to focus on my own music, probably around the early '90s, mm -hmm. when I you know was playing in college and playing in some bands, and I was like, all right, you know, I think I want to time to start doing my own thing. Me and a friend of mine, God rest her soul, Aurora, um, had a, a duo, an acoustic duo, with the two of us singing and me playing guitar. So that's kind of when I started really focusing back on vocals. Mm -hmm. So your main influences at this time were? At that time? Yeah. Um, Prince has always been a huge influence. Mm -hmm. um, Joni Mitchell, as she taught me about Joni, I taught her about Prince. That's kind of how we got together. <laughs> um, Marvin Gaye. Um, P-Funk has always been a huge influence. Um, anything Motown, Curtis Mayfield. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, has it always just been music or any other interest, but you decided to, to fully just divest yourself of music or just, you know, always been? It's funny you ask because I almost went to college as a visual art major instead of music because I always draw, I used to draw and paint a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but music was always my first love. So, so wait. So, you at, at what point did you say, you know what, this is exactly what what I'm, you know, going to dedicate my life to? I think it's kind of always been that. It's always been that. As as young as I can remember, um, you know, having visions of being up on stage with an instrument in my hand, you know, hopefully bringing joy to the masses, right. is has always been what I've wanted to do. And while you at Rutgers, you all, you you're actually a, a music music major. No. For the most part, I went, as a, <laughs> I went as a and as a psych major. I did that to kind of please my mom because she didn't want me taking music as a major. But all my electives were music classes, <laughs> so I basically was, you know, uh, undercover music major. <laughs> right. So I mean, shortly uh, thereafter, is that when you uh, actually got just you know left New Brunswick and made your way up to? Uh, I did the big actually. Bright city. I was playing bass in this band called Spy Gods. Shout out to Bob Ramos, Robin Renee, and Mike Marcello. Um, I was playing bass in that band, and we had a little development thing going on with Sony Records at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, college, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. This is what I want to do. Right, right. Um, so I left college to pursue a full-time music career. Right. Um, they never released our record, unfortunately, but you know, it started my path onto, you know, working professionally in the industry. Awesome. So uh, tell us about this, uh, the, the next song. The I next song. This next song is actually my latest single, which is available on iTunes. Mm -hmm. It's called Promise Me, and it's an old soul one. So. <laughs> Once again, Sharif in Burgundy. Promise me. 
promise me you never leave me promise me you never lie and I promise you I'll always love you until the day I die I said promise me you'll never leave me promise me you'll never lie and I promise you I'll always love you until the day I die Yes, I will, yes, I will, yeah, yeah. So many have promised me they never leave me all alone. Oh, but how could they lie to a lonely man? And then just leave him there All on his own I said, promise me, you'll never leave me. Promise me, you'll never lie. And I promise you, I'll always love you until the day. I'll always love you until the day I die. Amen. We we were touching on this in the opening. Um, we were kind of laying like an overview of the conversation. As a songwriter. Right. What's what's your what's your process when you're sitting down and you're, you know, you're, you're putting together your songs? Because they seem to be coming from like a, like a pretty soulful, a pretty spiritual place. Um, the, it's no rhyme or reason to it really, but typically the music will come before the lyrics, mm. and I'll have like a feeling about what the song is going to be about, and I kind of put the chord changes together around that, and the lyrics are kind of the one of the hardest things for me to write sometimes because unless it comes right away, some songs come right away. Mm -hmm. um, but if it doesn't, it could take years and years and years. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been writing this one song um, kind of about uh, gentrification and change and what you see happening, and, and it's literally, I wrote the chords to the song like, honestly about 10 years ago and still am working out the lyrics because I'm just so particular about what I want to say and how I want to say it and the juxtaposition of words right. um, because words mean so many different things to so many different people. So you literally like just let the song just kind of marinate for a pretty minute. Pretty much, pretty much. It has to grow up when it's ready to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it takes you a while to kind of get it. Sometimes, you know, then some others come right away. I wrote a song last night in literally like three minutes. <laughs> I won't be doing that one today. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, um, as you're such a great, a great songwriter, oh, thank uh, you. I, 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 I remember first meeting you um, 
at a John Legend rehearsal years ago. And, but I, the thing is, I, I saw you playing live and you always been the front man. Um, what's the, what's the, what's the trade off there? I know that we all want to be a leader, but the, the lessons that you learn on the road and as a session musician, how do they shape you as a musician that you are right now? Um, in so many ways, uh, just getting comfortable being in that environment, you know, it's uh, the camaraderie of it all. Mm -hmm. And just learning, you know, okay, well, this is how it's done, you know, in terms of stage production, mm -hmm. uh, being a tour manager and looking at everybody's roles mm -hmm. in the, uh, in the, that make up the whole equation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, learning what not to do as well mm -hmm. in terms of being the band leader. You know, I want to always make sure my band is taken care of. Right. I mean, at this point, like if you um, have like a dream collaboration, who who would it uh, who would it be with? Um, you know, I would really love to do some writing with D'Angelo. I mean, one of my dream collaborations I've done with Andre Simone. He and I wrote songs together for a project with another label from L.A. I was signed to that didn't re release my record, whose name shall also remain unnamed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love what D'Angelo is doing. I love that he has some conscious music. I think we need more of that in mm -hmm. today's society, and I would love to do some collaborating with him. So live, it's in uh, in regards to performance. Is it you solo and like in this setting, or normally do we get to hear you with a live band and you really turn it up a notch? I do have a full band, and I was just talking downstairs again with Terrence about this. I wanted to have them here today, mm -hmm. but my drummer is currently on tour with Bilal, and my bass player is doing a residency in Bahrain, and... Um, Man, they missing out today. <laughs> they sure are. Yeah. <laughs> and I was gonna put something together, but I was like, you know what, I, I'd rather not put something together, and if it's under rehearsed, and if it's gonna be half, mm, I'd rather just come out and do it solo and and not have to worry, basically, if people went home and did their homework. All right, so you, you currently have a, what, a Tuesday night residency yes. in, a, in the downtown Brooklyn area. Yes. Tell, and us, tell us some more about that. The place is formerly known as Keeley, and they changed the name to Bijan's a few years ago now. And when I play there every Tuesday, it's on 81 Hoyt Street. Please come on out and support. Yeah. We get started around 10 o'clock. And uh, when I play there, I play solo acoustic. So it's just become so comfortable for me to do it in this scenario. Um, you know, sometimes this is easier than doing it with the band because I can you are the band. direct it where I want to go, yeah. slow down tempos if I want to, speed up, do, you know, just do whatever I want to do. So is the, is the night, ba it's you and it's basically what, uh, open jam session? To open where? jam session. Uh, we do a sign-up sheet. Anybody that wants to, I hesitate to call it an open mic because we get some really good talent that comes through as opposed to your average open mic with, you know, so-and-so that just learned how to play guitar last month. But we, <laughs> we, get, some, we get some good, solid players and songwriters that come through so uh -huh. you know yeah the so, night has held a reputation we started it there me and my buddy jeff broadnecks started it there way back in 2002 and when i'm on the road you know i'll have someone else host for me um but yeah wow know, what a, fifth, a 15 year yeah, residency yeah wow yeah cool. and it's you know it's it's survived on its word of mouth and i just love having the place where artists can come together and network it's just a place for them to do their thing, you know, no pressure. It's free to get in, yeah. you know, the, the food is good, the drinks are not that expensive, you know, just a haven, if you will, for artists. So y'all come on out and stop being punks and come on out to the Tuesday night thing. <laughs> well, so what basically you've made this into like a, um, like an institution, like a Brooklyn basically, institution, yes. man. Basically, yes. Indeed, indeed. Cool, cool. So let's talk about the next song that you're going to get into. The next song. You know what, I think I'm going to do this one I was talking about that's been taking me forever to write. Um, it's still... How, how, how long has this one taken you? This, this is the one I was talking about, about the gentrification and change. I mean, we'll call it change for now. That'll be the working title for tonight. Right. <laughs> All right. Cool.
from the vein This old neighborhood don't look the same What's with all these condos and fancy stores Man, I swear the block wasn't like this before Jenkins so sweet She say hi When I walk by Tell me everything on the street But neighborly today Ain't what it's about They showed up Briefcase full of money Trying to buy a house That's what I got so far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, man. Um, in a lot of ways, I, I'm uh, I marvel at your career, so, you know, that I've known you for so long, and I know that you uh, you played on some Grammy-winning recordings. Indeed. Yeah. Which which ones? Uh, which one did you play on? Because you know, I I remember one in particular, but I'll let you I'll let you explain. Well, I played on Alicia Keys's "You Don't Know My Name." Um, John Legend, I played on uh, So High, won the Grammy for a live performance. I do a nice big solo on that one. Um, and a couple other records off Heaven, off of his second album. Mm -hmm. um, how long did you work, how long did you, uh, did you work with John? I toured and recorded with him for his first three albums. Okay. So it was Get Lifted, um, Once Again, and Evolver. Right. Did you feel as if like your you as an artist kind of grew from that experience, taking away a little like you said you learned from like a lot of musicians? Did oh, you definitely, definitely. You know, getting to be in the studio with you know great producers like Kanye West and just watching their process and you know just kind of sitting back in the cut and listening and watching. Absolutely. You know, like I said, everything should be a learning experience. So right. I try to take a little bit away with me from everything. Right, so all these experiences with all these great artists, did you, do you feel as if that's um, opened up more doors, more opportunities? Has it changed, you know, your, your, uh, your musical trajectory in any kind of way? Um, it's definitely opened up some ears and, and some opportunities here. You know, I'm, I'm here today. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, 
but uh, to direct to, to <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I try not to, you know. I, well, look, I you, think you know, as, as a musician, it's like it's like you know, man. Sometimes we do these gigs that people see us in a different light now because oh, you got you 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 work with X person and this person, and now. Rather than doing what you used to be doing, maybe it's you. You know, oh, yeah. getting bumped up yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and we'll embrace that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, at this point, what what are, what are your uh, what are, what are some things that are on the horizon? You know, besides the recording that's coming out. Well, I'm uh, actually flying to Asheville, North Carolina, tomorrow to do a show with uh, my buddy Claude Coleman Jr., who's the drummer for Ween. And he has his own band called Amandla. Um, so we're playing down there. And then I'll be in that area. Then I'm heading out to Minneapolis for the weekend for some more uh, Prince celebrations. You know, it's the anniversary of his untimely passing this week, uh, April 21st, tomorrow. So there's some things going on at Paisley Park. So I'll be out there with Andre Simone again. Mm -hmm. um, and then I fly back to Asheville Monday. And I'll be down there for at least a week, maybe two. Recording this next record, you know, the song you just heard will be on it, and I'm just really excited about <clears throat> getting this next project out. Mm. I, I think we need, like I was saying, we need some more conscious music. We need, you know, not to put me on the level of a Marvin Gaye, but we need another What's Going On record out there. Mm. You know, I have a quick question, man, because uh, you, you just bought a Prince, mm -hmm. and you're Sharif in Burgundy. Like, what's the significance of, like, you know, that, that has to, if, if you use it in your name, it has to be, Well, you know, it's one of my favorite colors. I, I've I was, always I, I was guesstimating that from the, good, you know, it's on the guitar as well. And, you know, I used to always tell people, you know, if you mix my skin and my blood together, you get burgundy. <laughs> 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 A black and red thing. And I kind of still stand by that. You know, it's just um, my experience as a black man in this world. Mm -hmm. To me, I see the color burgundy. Mm -hmm. So between um, from, from this from this project, um, what are some of the, ex uh, the, the 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 musical experiences or your musical growth between this one that you're like you know conceptualizing right now and about to record, and you know previous other ones that you've worked on in the past? Um, song topic. First of all, is it much more like a much like a much more like me, like meaty topics, much more spiritual? You yes, know? absolutely, and and a lot more experience behind it. You know, I'm, I'm older now, so we've, mm -hmm. we've lived a little more. We have a little more bit more to say, mm. um, and and you know, again, just getting back to that conscious thing. You know, um, talking about what's going on out here today with this new um, person we have in office and all that surrounds that and how that's affecting all of our lives worldwide you know people think oh it's nothing but when you travel you know like mm -hmm. people give it to you in other countries and you know I, it, it reminds me of a time when I was traveling in Holland which is one of the nicest countries on the planet. Mm -hmm. But when Bush was in office, they gave it to us, man. They were like, you stupid Americans, and how did you? I'm like, I didn't vote for that cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can, so I, I, I only, I can imagine. only imagine what mm -hmm. those discussions would, are, are right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right. so that's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking to address on this next record. Oh, beautiful. So tell us about the, uh, the next song. And this, is the next song on, uh, was this, is this a, uh, Newer material from the record? Or? Yes, this this is, um, I mean, a lot of these songs to me are old because I've been playing them now for a few years, but they have never been released, so they're still new to you guys. <laughs> this one is called um, Devil Friends, this song. I kind of wrote this um, after I kind of stopped touring and doing things, and you know, when you're not on stage and on TV every day and people don't see you so much, you know, the phone stop ringing a little bit, text messages stop coming in a little bit, you know, people don't want to, you know, oh, he ain't doing nothing, he ain't touring with John no more, he ain't doing nothing, you know, so this song kind of comes out of that. <laughs> you know, I, I, sometimes, because I think it's like, almost like the opposite in a sense, like they see you and like, oh, well, you know, we, we, we can't afford him now. <laughs> you know, because it, 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 gets, it gets like that. But Well, it, in terms of gigs, but no, I'm just talking about the people who try to be around you on a day-to-day, -day, your so-called friends, you know. So that's what this song is addressing, all the, the phonies. <laughs> <laughs>
ain't nobody when need somebody when there's so much pain they all fade away but when you got money and when you got pain see them skinning and grinning here they all come again those devil friends Smile in my face, talk behind my back. Didn't think I'd find out has it come to there? And, uh, where's the truth? And, uh, where's the justice? Man, man. Hate I wasted all my time for nothing, devil friends. <sighs> devil friends, all them devil friends, all them devil friends. Oh, devil friends, all oh, your. How they're blowing, won't you? Close your mouth, cause now your horns are showing. I don't have no harmonica, but if I did. Don't stroke my ego, let me swallow my pride, I'm gone. Lay my burdens down by this here riverside And when this old world up and burns away Let me have my place up in heaven's gates away Away from oh, 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 oh. All them devil friends, all them devil friends, away from the devil friends, all them devil friends, all them devil, all them devil, all them devil, all them devil friends. It's a tinge of humor in there, just a tinge, though. <laughs> so every, uh, so uh, the, this this new recording that you're going to be doing, this basically has a mixture of new stuff, old stuff, or this st stuff. Well, that again, you, old that to me because I've been doing them for a few years, but you know, all unreleased material as of to date. Right. So, curious, um, if you had to give advice <laughs> to the up and coming songwriter in today's climate, uh, as a musician from your experiences, what, uh, what, what kind of uh, mentorship or advice would you, would you pass along? Um, just try and say something. Uh, they, these songs you hear nowadays and dabbing and all of this and that, what are they talking about in these songs? <laughs> like, right. Other than pushing up on some girl on the dance floor or something. <laughs> I mean, there's more to life than that. You know, Say something positive. You know, and, and stay true to what you want to do, you know, but be about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So musically, like, what are, you, um, what, are you, what are you listening to now that you're, like, kind of checking out? I know that today's music might, you know, lean in a, you know, suit. Um, I, I, honestly, I haven't really listened. I don't listen to the radio that much. If I do, I keep it on WBGO, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the jazz station. Um, I, I don't even know what's the most recent record I've gotten outside of the new De La Soul is amazing, the new Tribe Called Quest, you know. Mm. Um, I haven't peeped the new Kendrick Lamar album. I keep hearing it's great, um, but I haven't heard it yet. Mm. Um, so that's, maybe I'll go explore that tonight. So wait, wait, but if you're on WBGO, what kind of, what, what kind of jazz are you listening to? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I'm a classical <laughs> guy. I like, you know, of course, Coltrane and Miles. Who doesn't love Coltrane and Miles? Um, pretty much anything that comes on there. I learn a lot about jazz just from listening to that station because I didn't grow up uh, in the jazz world or playing jazz. You know, I grew up more on the soul side of things. Well, because harmonically, I could, I, I, I hear a lot of jazz influence and in, like the, 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 um, the harmony and the chords that you like that, that you write to. It's very inventive in a sense, and to Thank me, it, it, it has a lot of like jazz background. That's why I was curious how, how much like actually influenced that. Because it's 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 very it's very very different than the, the the typical you know 
guy with the guitar. It sounds very, uh, very, it's very intricate. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and that probably comes more from my gospel background than jazz, but you know, it's all intertwined. Gospel, blues, and jazz are almost one and the same to me in a lot of ways. Awesome. Do you have like another uh, another song off the set list? Sure, sure. Let's. Um, what time are we looking at? Or how many songs? Yeah, how many more songs can we can we hear from you? Uh, as many as you would like to. We could go all night if we have to. <laughs> yeah, we have we have time for like two or three more songs. Two or three more. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do let's do this one. This one is off of Bubby's Love. It's called Together. to say words get in the way but what the hell is going on in the minds of the powers that be here today they said our president was a joke America did it get your gold terrorist planes and snipers right here in your good old US of A one of these days we gonna get along one of these days we gonna sing a song together and it'll be just fine did you hear the news nostradamus and revelations came true your ring could feed a village now tell me on judgment day what you gonna do how much did the government spend today did we make sure the nipple tweakers got paid Hungry mob and I'm chilling on my ice sipping capacity and shade. One of these days we gon' get along together. And one of these days we gon' sing a song together. Still I say, one of these days we gon' get along together. And one of these days we gon' sing a song. The, uh, the inspiration for that song. I'm curious, <laughs> man. What, what, what that was, was actually, I wrote that song um, a while ago, and it was before Obama got into office. Um, and it was kind of, you know, back when, um, I think I wrote that after 911, actually. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote that one after 911. When we started to see more of uh, terrorism on the news and and that kind of thing happening and it was becoming less of a thing that happened over there and more of a thing that was happening over here mm -hmm. so. so a lot of your stuff i notice has like a little a lot, some political tilt to it yeah some political tip to it and i try to keep it a little uh comedic a little bit you right. know mm -hmm. uh <laughs> the nipple tweaker line that was supposed to be funny <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, yeah, again, just trying to say something. All right. So um, in the future, um, after you finish recording the record, uh, what, what, what are some other things that, you know, that, we, that we'll be able to find you doing? Or better yet, what are you aspiring, you know, like at this point, what, what are the, some of your big aspirations as far as like future endeavors, future projects? Uh, what do you see this, you know, your, uh, your playing in your career going at this point? I want to do it all, man. I want to put this record out. I want to tour it. You know, I would love to tour it worldwide. Um, I would love to, you know, I've produced for a few artists, some local, um, some bigger names as well. I would like to do more of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe start a record label. I think I'm going to put this next record out on my own label, unless, mm -hmm. unless I get a better offer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 
Was yeah. it the, was the was the last one an uh, independent record as well? Or? It was. It, yeah. I mean, do you find like there's a freedom of actually being able to control, you know, your own your, your own product? Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. The, the downside to that is you don't have the big, you know, the corporate money to help get it out to the masses, or at least I don't, um, to help get it out to the, you know, labels are basically a big bank. They give you a big loan and say, okay, here, you put this thing out, and we're going to recoup all of that. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, but... Um, with with a, a message of like political tilt and everything, maybe it behooves you to say, hey, you know what? This is my baby, and I want to protect it, and I want to just keep this the way, keep my art, my music, uh, you know, as a person on, you know, in, in, in true in true to its uh, meaning. Yeah, and it can be done. I mean, you know, artists are things are going viral every day. You know, we have the internet now, so and YouTube and all these things, so it can be done. Awesome. Well, can you set up the um, this uh, this next song that you? Have? Sure. Um, is this our last one? Oh, okay. second to last. We have second to last. Yeah. Okay. I forgot about this one. Um, this song is called "No Fool No More," and you know it's it's one of my PhD breakup songs. <laughs> <laughs> Gestures makes the biggest sound. Could be guilty for wearing my heart on my sleeve. And when you told me you loved me, I was a fool to ever believe. And now I'm, I'm not gonna play your fool anymore. If you're so ready to just walk out the door, then go out right ahead. Let's settle the score. Gestures makes the biggest sound. Let me get that door for you. I could be guilty for wearing my heart on my sleeve. And when you told me you loved me, I was that fool to ever believe. And now I'm not gonna play your fool anymore. If you're so ready to just walk out the door, the go out of here. Let's settle the score. I'm not gonna play a fool anymore.
Thank you. Thank you, Sharif. The love is strong right now, and I hate to break this energy, but we're out of time. Thank you, Sharif and Burgundy, for giving us your message of devotion. You can pick up where we left off and keep up with Sharif on Instagram at Sharif in Burgundy. I'm Kenyatta Beasley, and I really hope that you enjoy this episode of B-Side. Be sure to check in or stop by the Brick House Studios every Thursday to hear more of the best music that Brooklyn has to offer. You can also check out this and past episodes anytime at youtube.com slash brick tv okay sharif take us away with one more tune right after this all night to get you away from the crowd I don't think I have to tell you why ain't my body language speaking so very loud I've been looking at you and I think that it's time to go home baby let's go home cause tonight we will be lovers Tonight we're gonna be best friends Oh, tonight we're gonna make love Until no end yeah. Till no end Gonna make love I don't always like to act this way But you know just how to get me in I was trying my best to behave Then you had to walk in here looking so damn good You've been looking at me and I think we're both ready to go home Baby, let's go home Cause tonight we will be lovers Tonight we're gonna be best friends Oh, tonight we're gonna make it love Till no end, yeah. Till no end, yeah. Till no end, yeah. Till no end. Till no end. Don't make love. Blatter. Friends.